Hi, I'm Kent. Let's use my new mold system to make a new form. In some previous videos, I went ahead and made slip casting molds for these two forms here. So this was a tumbler and this here is a small bowl. They have similar shapes. So this here is the mold I used to create this pot here. And what I did was I basically sketched the outside form that I wanted and I had some software that I'm working on create all the 3D printed pieces I needed. So this one I printed out and created in a more or less traditional way. So it gave me this here. I then made some improvements and I created this mold here for this small bowl. So similarly, I have an inside mold that creates the form, but I also went ahead and created an outside mold so that I can create a plaster slip casting mold that uses less plaster and it's just nicer to use. So here is the associated plaster mold. Slip goes in here, fill it up, trim it off, and then pop out your pot. This one's been fired. I just have the raw clay on the outside and gloss on the inside. I'm basically building up a family here and I want to add another form. So I went into my 2D software and modified the sketch slightly. I'm keeping the outside profile and I basically blew it out a little bit. Software then went ahead and created an STL file that I printed out to test the form. And here is the result. And when I printed it out, it felt a little bit big. So I added a feature to my software to calculate the internal volume and it turned out this is about 850 milliliters. I then went ahead and measured the bowls in my cabinet and they're about 750 milliliters. So I wanted to shrink this down. I didn't want to make it shorter. So I went ahead and shrunk the diameter in my 2D sketch. This had brought the outside wall in a little bit and then ran it again and I got this form. It may be a little bit subtle in terms of differences, but I like the feel of this one better. So what I want to do is go ahead and make a new plaster mold for this. So I ran the software and the inside mold works just fine basically the equivalent of this piece. So the software goes ahead and scales it up, adds the slip well, etc. That will go ahead and print on my 3D printer just fine. The problem is the associated outside mold for the plaster doesn't fit, it's too big. I could go ahead and create an outside mold in a traditional way, but I really like my 3D printed outside mold. In the last two videos, I've been experimenting with different ways to join different 3D printed pieces together. And I have settled for now on inserts and bolts and a rubber gasket to seal it. So this was a test that I did and it seems that the joint itself is okay. So since then, I've went ahead and modified my software to go ahead and create these flanges automatically. And here is my new mold. I went ahead and printed out all the pieces. The outer mold now is in four pieces and there's an inner mold as well. I've just taped this together temporarily for right now. I'll explain that in a minute. There are four sections for the ring. Same problem, those won't print on my printer. And then the inner mold's one piece. One thing I do want to note is that 3D printed pieces are not perfect. And here's an example. So this ring here, I will need to super glue together to turn into one piece. And there's actually a little bit of a gap in the middle. So the ends are actually bulged out a little bit. That's not uncommon with 3D printed pieces. So I'm going to need to sand these a little bit, but we have to be careful about assuming that the 3D print is perfect. So this was the first version of the software that seemed to work. Although there are a few bugs in this and that has to do with the tape. I managed to get the flange calculation wrong. So the base for the foam gasket around the inside ring is incorrect. I also managed to get the number of holes wrong. Somehow I have 10 holes in the ring and 11 in the inside mold. So the bolts on the inside don't work out. I don't really want to reprint this. I think it will work good enough. So I'm just going to hack it together. I think I can go ahead and fix the bugs in the software and in our next attempt to make a mold, hopefully it'll be all right. So this was just a mock-up to see how things worked. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it apart. Right now, these rings are just cut flush. I haven't decided how I want to join them together yet. That is something still to be determined, but I think the rest of the mold system is coming together pretty well. So here is the equivalent inner mold that we're going to use. And you can see how much bigger the outer mold got. So there's a few advantages of splitting this outer mold. One is I could print it in four different pieces. Each one of these pieces will fit on my 3D printer just fine. This will also let me disassemble the mold so I can release it from the plaster easier. This one I wound up cutting off. Potentially you could go ahead and like prime and sand this to make it more smooth. If you want that for the inside face of the pot, I think that's fine. For the outside, I really want to try and reduce the amount of work possible. So being able to work with a relatively quick and dirty 3D print on the outside is a goal that I want to try and achieve. So I mentioned I messed up with the inner flange. So what I'm gonna do this time is actually just silicone this together. That'll let me rescue these 3D printed pieces. And as I said, I'll update the software and we can do it the way I intended in the future. The outside, all the bolt holes line up just fine, and we can go ahead and use the gasket material there. So I'm gonna do a little bit of prep work to these mating faces since they bowed out a little bit. I'm just gonna sand them just a little bit.
All right, so now hopefully these will align and mate better. I can get them oriented the right way. So there's still a tiny bit of gap there, but I'm hoping CA glue can fill that in. So first up, I wanna go ahead and CA glue these together so I can turn this outer ring into one big piece. And to get the alignment right, I'm gonna use my partially assembled mold here. So this has a few inserts and a few bolts in it, good enough so that it's the right shape. And I can go ahead and attach this and then CA glue the joints. I think I'll put a little bit of tape on this face so I don't see a glue it down to the outer mold. All right, there we go, it's in place. That means it should be aligned pretty well. One of the other things I got wrong is I wanted this joint here to not align with this joint. So basically be able to rotate it and put the joint somewhere in the middle. Somehow I got the hole spacing wrong for that as well. If it were offset, little shifts shouldn't happen. So right here I can see a little offset in between, but I think it'll be okay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and CA glue this together. That's set up so I can take it apart again. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put some more CA glue here on the inside. At this point, I should go ahead and put the foam down and the rest of the inserts. However, since I have this bug in terms of this not fitting properly, I'm gonna go ahead and put the silicone down. All right, then I'll go ahead and put this in. All right, and now I wait. This waiting part here is why I was looking for an alternative besides using caulking, so I could go ahead and proceed right away. But that's also what you get with beta software. There's some bugs that come along with it. I can go ahead and fix those. It's the next day and the caulking has all cured. So now we have this attached. Getting this aligned with the silicone was a little bit tricky. These threaded inserts and the bolts definitely help with alignment. So I'm looking forward to my next version where I have that correct. There's a little bit of squeeze out that will show up in our plaster if we leave it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and take that off. All right, that's better. While I'm thinking about it, there are a few artifacts in the 3D print that I wanna take care of with some sandpaper. If I wanted this really smooth, I would use this. This is filler primer. It's basically a special primer that goes on that's kind of thick that you can then sand through. And so it basically fills in all of the little imperfections, the valleys in all of the 3D print. So you can actually put on multiple coats and get a really nice finish. I'm actually kind of liking the 3D print effect and it matches the other two forms that I have. So I'm not gonna do it right now. However, this is definitely an option if you guys wanna go ahead and make your own pots using this technique. All right, and then this ring, I'm just gonna clean up the CA glue a little bit. That's slightly better. I really just don't want it grabbing onto the plaster. The surface finish is less critical since this is the outside of the mold. I went ahead and I put all the 3D inserts in. So there they all are. I just heat set those in, basically take a soldering iron and push them in. That will then let me th thread the screws into them from the other side. Here I went ahead and put this foam sealing gasket on the outside. So I have a continuous bead here all the way around, up the other side. I did these three pieces. Need to go ahead and do this one and the bottom piece. So let me do this last side here. So this has an adhesive backing, you just pull it back, push it down. And you'll notice I'm holding it back from this front edge here. There is a slight protrusion. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but there's a slight protrusion here. So the idea is that only this face here touches for 3D print. The rest is gonna be this rubber gasket versus rubber gasket touching each other. On the bottom, the corresponding feature is actually in this piece here, down here. So I just need to hold it back a couple of millimeters. And I found that this rubber tape will bend around the corners relatively easily. Back up the other side. And 
and just snip it off. And then go around and just make sure that it's all pressed down. Doesn't need to be perfect. Again, this is just to be able to create a good seal for the plaster. So that's done. And then same thing, this little lip here, I need to go ahead and put the gasket in as well. There's all of the mechanical prep work. So these will then go around the outside edge like that. So in my last mold making video, I went ahead and put a lot of Murphy's Oil soap on to the 3D printed piece as a mold release or as an attempted mold release. It seems like it didn't actually help that much. So I'm gonna skip it this time. I'm not gonna put any on. When you have a plaster to plaster connection, you definitely need this so the plaster doesn't stick to itself. I'm not so sure about the 3D printed piece. Now that I have a good way to release this inner mold and the outer mold will come apart, I'm gonna try removing it from the equation and seeing what we get. I think this might be messing with the surface finish of the plaster a little bit. That's why I'm going to take it off. I am, however, going to spray the inner mold with some Windex. The idea behind the Windex is it will break any little tiny bubbles that get formed. It basically breaks down the surface tension of water. And so if there's any little plaster bubbles, hopefully they will break. Set this off the side. Now we'll assemble the outer mold. So I have a couple of screws in here already from when I was test assembling it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in and then I'll put in the rest of the screws. And not too tight. I didn't make any holes in the gasket. You can just kind of push the screw through. It requires a little bit of feel though to do so. All right, that's two screws all around. So this is now held together firmly and it's drawn together to joint. There's still a small gap here. I think some of this will persist, just the nature of the 3D print. As we put in more screws, it'll snug up a little bit more. So we go ahead and quickly put in those more screws. I'm not sure I need this many, but since I'm still experimenting with this mold system, I'm gonna go ahead and put them all in. And with the drill, it goes pretty quick. All right, there is all the way around, all the screws, and it has snugged it nice and together. Again, there's still these tiny little gaps here, but that is what the foam is there to catch. So the screws provide the mechanical strength to hold back the plaster, and then the foam will keep it from leaking. So this is the outside of the mold. Maybe a lot of work for the outside, but I found that it really makes the molds a lot nicer. And these techniques definitely transfer into other things we want to do in the future. So now we take the inner mold. Go ahead and see if I can get this aligned and the first few started. All right, got all those in except for this one. I'm not getting it aligned for some reason. So I'm hoping when I get the rest, it'll be easier. I'll go ahead and do that right now. All right, the fasteners are all tightened. So hopefully we have a good seal all along here. The foam's nice and compressed. Likewise on the edges. The inside of our mold should be ready to go. So let's go ahead and reset for plaster. Since the software is doing all the 3D modeling for me, it knows the volume that I need for plaster. So it goes ahead and spits out how much dry plaster I need and how much water. So here's the water, and I just measured out the dry plaster as well. So just like you've seen me do before, I will take the dry and put it on the wet, let it slake for three and a half minutes. I'll then mix it for four minutes, and then go ahead and pour it in. Top, a little too much. All right, plaster volume calculation is good again. And I spilled a little bit on the backside that you probably can't see, but otherwise it looks like we're doing good. I don't see any plaster coming out of the PLA. All of our joints look great. We'll go ahead and let this go through a heat cycle, the exothermic reaction, so the plaster sets. And then we will see if all of this work creating this structure is worth it and we can easily demold this. Okay, the plaster is set. You can see it in my bucket here. Oh, this is going to work really well for removal. But we'll deal with that later. Let's get to the main event and demold this. No leaks, which is great. Let's take these out. And next we'll do the sides, so these side panels should come off. All 
right, that's the screws all the way around and it should just come apart. Oh yeah, perfect. I have definitely not had a mold come apart that easy in a very long time. So there's the outside mold. So here are our seams. We've got a little bit of plaster in there, but not too much. And I think I overfilled the bottom. It's got a little bit of sharp edge here. So let me go ahead and clean that up real quick. All right, just knock that edge off and might as well do the seams real quick. Just so it's nice and smooth to handle. And there definitely is some of the roughness of the 3D print. And again, that was just printed on a draft setting so that it would print as quick as possible. It's now the inner mold. So this is where my bug in my software comes to haunt me again. So, oh, that's not too bad. Came off relatively easily. Some of it's still not set actually. Let me clean that off. So apparently 24 hours isn't long enough for the caulking to set fully, at least all the way on the inside. Right now this print is basically upside down from the way it was printed. And now I have this lip where the ring is, where potentially I can grab onto it. However, a couple videos ago, I figured out a way to go ahead and release this inner mold. So let's go ahead and try that trick again and see if it works. All right, so what's the secret to getting this mold out? It's this. So this here is a mixture of water and isopropyl alcohol that's been in my freezer at this point since my video where I tried this out. And that means the temperature has gotten down basically the temperature of my freezer. So zero degrees Fahrenheit. The inside is slushy. It's frozen, but not completely frozen. So it's still slightly fluid. And we're gonna put this in and fill it up. And the cold temperature should shrink the PLA just a little bit to release. And it's definitely cold. So that's filled mostly to the top. Last time I let this sit for maybe two or three minutes. So I'm gonna do the same and we will go ahead and see if we can get the inner mold out. All right, let's dump it out and see if it's released. All right, and while it's cold, let's lift up. Perfect, released perfectly. This trick is amazing. This mixture of alcohol and water, I can go ahead and recycle, basically put it back into my container and reuse it later. So that came out just like that, no struggles at all. And here is our new mold. I see one tiny bubble right here, and that is it. In one of our previous videos, someone noticed some plaster stuck to the outside of the mold, and here you can see it in the foot a little bit. That's probably why it was hard to release. And I'm gonna go ahead and break this edge right here. Probably need to put that into my 3D design somehow so I don't have to do this manually. All right, let's take another quick look at this mold. So the top surface where the ring is, this is getting better. There are definitely some artifacts where the CA glue connection was. You can see them there. Not a big deal, this isn't where the pot's formed, but it'd be nice to get this better. And then the inside of the mold is a faithful copy of our master. Putting together this outer mold definitely takes some work. However, it looks like we have a successful solution. The inserts into the 3D print held it together nice and tight. The foam held back all the plaster so we had no leaks. And the advantage really came when we were demolding us. Once I did the screws, basically it just fell off. I don't think I've had an outer plaster mold ever come off so easily. So there's a huge advantage just in that. And the ring, as I talked about, there's still a few bugs to work out here. The inner mold, I wanna go ahead and use the 3D inserts instead of the caulk. And I need to think more about this connection between the different ring segments. But again, this worked. The trick for using the ice and alcohol mixture on the inside is also just magical. Getting these inside forms out is now super easy. And I don't know about you, but I am very happy with this mold. Definitely one of my better ones. All right, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and let this finish curing and dry all the way out so that we can slip cast a pot. All right, looks like our pot's forming and I actually see it pulling away just a little bit. So let me dump out the excess slip here. There is our pot. So I'm gonna turn this over and let it drain the rest of the way. And we'll come back to it when it's ready to pop out.
You can see it releasing. Go ahead and trim it up. So we can cut down just to the shelf and then over. Careful not to dig into the plaster. All right, it's feeling still pretty soft. So I'm gonna let this set up for a little bit longer and then we will flip it out. Got a piece of cardboard here I can use to pick up these larger forms and flip them over. Oh, yep, I heard it. And there we go, one new slipcast bowl. Overall, I'm really happy with this one piece mold system that I put together. It was great to get the flanges all incorporated into the software and the gaskets working with the threaded inserts. That lets us create a really nice mold and make some really cool forms with relative ease. Basically anything you can draw up, the software can process. We're still limited to one piece molds right now. Basically they need to have a draft angle so we can pop them out. Multi-piece molds are on the to-do list still. Speaking of the to-do list, there's a few other small tweaks I wanna do. Look forward to those in a future video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.